Let's illustrate this point using Mortensen math. Here we have some units. And if you ask a child to count these, or even an adult to count these, you pretty much have to count them one by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But if we form them into a rectangle, they become very easy to count. And now I can see that if I have a rectangle that's simply three over and four up, Oops. Three times four is 12. But the rectangle makes it very easy to count so that I don't have to count every single block in there. Let's try again with sixes. Can we see here each one of these is six. This is three by six. The whole thing is 18. Three by six, 18. And it doesn't change if I change it the direction. Six by three, still 18. Some people give that a complex name, like the associative property of multiplication. Now, the next concept, we've come all the way from basically 2,000 years ago with just those three concepts. But the next concept, and this is bringing us up to about, oh, the time of Christ or so, is uh, the concept of zero. Zero. Zero is our hero because he does so much for you. And the fifth concept is the concept of one. If you're going to count, you need to know what one is. This guy named One Stone came along about a, a century ago. Have you ever heard of One Stone? And he said, if you're going to count, you need to know what one is, and even then it's going to be relative. Actually, his name was Einstein in English or excuse me, in German, one stone in English. Anyhow, let us begin in earnest with the Martinson math, showing you how to take these concepts and do complex mathematics.